If someone were to ask me, what kind of herb should I grow? I'm a new gardener and I don't really know where to begin. I would have to say, hands down, grow oregano. It is so easy to grow and it is so flavorful. So I'll share with you some footage from my gardens over the past five years. I'll show you why you might want to grow it and how to get it started and then we'll also look at how you can take care of it and some of the problems you might experience. We'll take a look at how to harvest it, how to dry it, and then also I'll show you some recipe ideas. So first let's take a look at why you might want to grow oregano. Number one, as I mentioned, it is very easy to grow. It grows in almost all of your cool and warm climates. And then also, it's rich in vitamin A and K, um, as well as potassium and some other minerals. Not only do you grow oregano for cooking, but you can also use it for ornamental value in your landscape or crafting purposes if you are a crafter. And then a lot of people don't realize how good it is for chickens. If, I know a lot of you probably have your own chickens. Well, there was a study in 2012 about the essential oil from oregano and how good it is as an antimicrobial for chickens. So it can fight off a lot of the bad bacteria. So I'll leave a link for you and you can take a look at that study if you like. I'll leave a link down below the video if you'd like to check out that study or you could obviously pause the video and look at it right there on the screen. So first let's go ahead and get started. We want to plant the oregano and the first thing you'll need to do is take a look at your climate. In the U.S. we use a USDA plant hardiness zone map to determine what kind of plants might grow well in our area. However, if you live somewhere else in the world, please feel free to refer to the Celsius chart there at the right of the map so that you can also cross-reference that to zones because I will be referring to zones and not temperatures. So for those of you who live in zone 4 and lower, oregano can, might be a little tricky for you to grow. You can grow it as an annual. That means it will grow just for that year only and it will not continue to grow the following year because the cold temperatures where you live will kill oregano. Now if you wanted to keep your plant growing, you can always plant it in a container and then you would move that indoors during your winter months when it's really cold. If you live in zones 5 through 7, then you will find that oregano will grow as a perennial. You'll notice that it will die back in the winter months and then if you mulch it or maybe you don't even need to mulch it but I would recommend that you do, you'll notice that in the springtime it will grow back for you. Now this is the zone range that I live in so many of the examples I will show you will be for zone 6B. Now if you live in zone 8 or higher, you will notice that that oregano will grow all year long as an evergreen. And you will want to plant that in an area that gets afternoon shade, okay, so um, it won't burn up on you. <laughs> oregano really does like some of those cooler temperatures. You can plant oregano in your native soil or also in containers. I plant them in two areas. I plant them in my uh, container garden and out in my native soil. So once you've determined your zone and that you, how you are going to have to grow it, whether you're going to have to put it in a pot and bring it indoors in the winter, or whether it will come back for you every year after it dies in the winter, or whether it will grow as an evergreen for you, next you'll have to select your spot where you want it to grow. Now oregano needs about six hours of sunlight every day and when you're selecting your area most likely you're going to be doing this in the springtime and in the spring, early spring at least, you know that your trees, a lot of them may have lost their leaves depending on where you live and those trees are called deciduous which means they lose their leaves in the fall, in the winter and then they will grow back in late spring and summer. So just be aware of any of these types of trees around your garden because as those fill in in the late spring and summer they may cast a shade on the spot where you're planting your oregano and of course that goes for many other things that you may plant uh, that require sun. So just be aware of your trees when you're planting your garden. 
Here's an example of a deciduous tree that's at the corner of one of my gardens. And as you can see here in May, it is just starting to get some buds on it to fill in. And then in October, it is completely filled in. So that's an example of a deciduous tree for you. And then also the most important thing for oregano is you need to have soil that is very well draining. A sandy, loose, light soil is best for oregano. Stay away from any area that has hard, compacted soil or anywhere where water puddles when it rains. That is not an area that would be good for oregano. And now we get to select the type of oregano you may want to grow. Of course, most people use oregano for cooking, but I did want to touch on the other uses for oregano. Now, I like I grow mine just for culinary purposes, but as I mentioned earlier, you can also grow it for crafting or just ornamental value in your garden because some oregano is just absolutely beautiful and you can dry that for crafting. If you want to use it for culinary purposes, here are some varieties that you can use. Now you will notice that all of these are classified under the genus Oreganum. Now one interesting thing to note is that sometimes you might see a Mexican oregano or Cuban oregano. And the funny thing about that is they are not part of the genus Oreganum. And this is because they actually have the essential oil that is found in oregano called carvacrol. And this is just a fun little fact because um, as long as you have that essential oil in the plant, it has that oregano flavor and it will be called oregano, even though it's not part of the genus Oregonum. Okay, so I don't want to get too scientific on you here, but I just thought that was interesting because I have grown Cuban oregano and I have not grown a Mexican oregano though, but I hear it's very good. Now Cuban oregano is also called Spanish thyme and Indian borage. It grows very well in zone 10 through 11 and it is just a really beautiful plant. So I bet for those of you who live in warmer climates, give that a try because it is just really a nice plant. It has a lot of flavor, really good with meats. So I highly suggest that. Now this essential oil called carvacrol is not present in all oreganos. Some have very little of this essential oil and those are typically are the ones that are best for ornamental purposes or for crafting. Um, they also may display beautiful pink or purple flowers and their um, growing habit is that that it usually will mound up and then cascade over walls or over containers and trails it has a trailing growth habit so those are very nice for ornamental purposes and crafting but not typically for culinary purposes only because they don't have that essential oil in the plant itself so just keep in mind that just because it says oregano on it does not mean that it will have a good flavor for cooking. The most standard culinary oregano that you will find that's commonly sown is called Greek oregano. I absolutely love it. It will grow upright and it has white flowers. Some of the best flavor that I have grown from oregano is from my older established plants. Those that have been growing in my soil which is sandy and it's actually dried out a little bit. Uh, a lot of times it's noted that that essential oil in oregano increases during drought conditions so therefore you'll have more of a flavor so make sure that if you want to have a really good flavor of oregano just take care of that plant and continue to let it grow let it get nice and established and don't overwater it that will be some of the best flavor available provided of course that you have started with a good plant and we'll go over that in just a minute now Italian oregano, which is another one of those culinary oreganos, is a cross between sweet marjoram and Greek oregano. One thing about growing any of the oregano species is that they will cross very easily. And this is important for you to know when you start to grow oregano because if you are buying seeds, um, a lot of times you're not going to know what that tastes like 
and you may be buying seeds of some oreganos which have crossed and it might have a very bitter flavor it may lack in flavor and this is all because certain species have more of the essential oil in there which gives you that flavor and because I don't particularly like to grow oregano from seed I always recommend you buy a plant that is already established and then you can rub it between your fingers and smell it and if you want to and if you're a little bit adventurous and you're pretty sure they're not putting pesticides on them you could even taste a leaf or two this is the best way to ensure that you're getting a very flavorful plant because oregano is going to be with you a while a long time my plants i've had them for about 10 years now and they just keep on growing i've not had much problem with them and we'll cover problems in just a minute but i just wanted you to know that that's how you can make sure that you are getting a good plant. So I'll also leave some information for you here on the nutrition of fresh oregano versus dried oregano. And it is very, very good dried. It still retains a, a lot of its vitamins when it's dried, like vitamin A. And then as I mentioned too, it's also good to, for your chickens. So don't forget about your chickens in the winter. They can still enjoy it, provided that you have dried them a little bit for a winter snack. Now here are some varieties of oregano which are used for drying for craft purposes. And these are just really pretty. I think I might just have to grow some of these beautiful oreganos this year. Unfortunately, they don't look like they grow well in my zone, but um, I can give them a try in a container and just see how they do. One oregano that I've grown before is called golden oregano. It's more of an ornamental. It's just a beautiful color. Um, the one thing about this, if you will look closely, is that it will scorch in full sun. So this is an oregano that would be great for a partial shade area. So don't grow golden oregano in full sun. Those leaves are just very, very thin and feathery. They're very fine, just really pretty. But just remember with golden oregano is one that you would want to put somewhere else like in partial shade. So once you've selected the type of oregano you want to grow, then you make sure you have your spot picked out, whether it's in the container or your native soil, and you can test your soil to make sure that it is um, anywhere from about 6.0 to 8.0 pH. Oregano likes that more neutral to alkaline soil, and sometimes I, I'll throw a little bit of wood ashes in with my sandy soil, just a tiny bit, because it can actually be dangerous for some of your vegetable plants but I like to amend my soil with a little bit of wood ashes in the late fall after my garden has died down and then it has some time just to kind of leach into the soil I don't really put those on fresh plants so just be careful there but just know that oregano does like uh, more of the neutral pH soil where more of your vegetables like um, a little bit more acidic soil so oregano might not grow well next to your peppers and tomatoes okay and now we can take a look at how to get it growing so you want to grow oregano when your day air temperature is between about 60 degrees Fahrenheit and 70 degrees Fahrenheit this is the best temperature to get your oregano up and growing so I'll show you here how you can plant it in a container of course you can do this in your native soil as well and you'll just want to moisten your soil first especially if it's real dry and then we will sprinkle out some seeds right there on top you can just sprinkle out one or two or I'm doing about 10 okay you don't have to put a lot um, but I did uh, and then we'll just lightly very ever so lightly cover it up this will help just retain some of that moisture on the seeds but make a note that your oregano seeds need light to germinate and they are the tiniest seeds ever <laughs> so if you do end up putting any kind of soil or vermiculite on top do it ever so lightly so that it will still receive some light so they will sprout but I would not cover this up with soil if I was expecting rain because the rain will force those seeds down into the soil and that will give them um, ample moisture until they are up and growing. Now I will keep these misted 
uh, for the next three or four days until they're up and at this temperature around 70 degrees Fahrenheit it'll take about four days for them to be up and growing and this is what they look like when they come up and then just a few weeks later they'll start to take off and then in May this is what it looks like and then another very easy way to get your oregano growing is to just pull a stem right out of the ground and if you have a neighbor or someone that's growing oregano maybe they'll let you do this for them and if you already have a patch growing and maybe you want to grow some for friends and family then go ahead and pull you out a couple of out of your patch and you want to make sure you get some of the root on your plants okay and this is real important and we will just stick these right in some soil and you want to make sure that you put it in here with the roots underneath the soil line and I like to do this kind of horizontally right there on the top of the soil and then just gently cover it right up with your soil um, and instead of sticking it you can actually stick it down vertically too but since I had a lot of roots there I just went ahead and put them right there on top of the soil okay and now we'll water it in real well make sure you're using a high quality potting soil mix and then I put this in some shade because this new plant right here will not like that sun that hot sun you need to put it in shade until it starts to acclimate to its new environment now once it's rooted down I'll just go ahead and start pruning off the top a little bit and this will encourage growth from the bottom and it will become a nice bushy plant for me in just a few weeks you can see how pruning it encourages more growth And now we'll take a look at how to care for your oregano. Um, that's one of the things I love about oregano is that it requires very little care. And it's really nice because um, as long as you have selected a good location and you have a well-draining soil, you should have very little problems with oregano. Really, the only thing that I have noticed over the years growing this for over 10 years is that a regular pruning does magic with this plant you will notice that your oregano will start to get rather slender and the leaves will get smaller and they'll become more spaced apart and this is telling you that it is about to go to flower and this is a perfect time to cut it all down and dry it I usually do this with my spring harvest of oregano I like to dry my spring harvest and this is before it's gotten real woody and before it's gone to flower however sometimes my plant will get away from me and I don't have time to go out there and cut it down and dry it and so here is an example when that happened and you'll notice that in the middle it starts to sprawl out and spread around and then it goes to flower now you can still use the oregano flowers no big deal they have flavor too um, but as I mentioned I like to dry usually my first spring harvest of oregano every year so this is what it will look like and then at this point you know it's gotten very woody so I just want to cut it down leaving about five inches of those woody stems there so this is what I ended up with a big mound of overgrown oregano and then just about a month later it started to regrow for me it really liked that pruning now I had a lot of new growth I think this was around in August and then in September it was looking beautiful again so I was able to cut a lot for fresh use of course I could also dry this again so this was some Italian oregano that was just screaming for me to go ahead and cut it back and so I started trimming it back and I ended up with a big paper bag full of it which I dried and then this is kind of what it looked like after that I think this was around in July for me because this was at a really cool location now you'll notice that sometimes when your plant has been in the ground for a while maybe uh, two years or more that the center of your plant 
won't have as vigorous growth as the outside of your plant and that's simply because that plant is getting bigger and it's spreading and it's searching out more nutrition it's lost a lot of the nutrition that's right there in the middle of the plant now you can go and feed that with some compost and start to build up a lot of nutrition or go ahead and pull your plant out and divide it and then you will have a lot more new plants and just give it a new location here's an example where I had a Greek oregano plant that really needed a new location and so I was able to get about four more plants out of here and I did this simply by dividing it with my shovel it was very actually pretty hard to do it the oregano has a pretty good root system on it and I wanted to take some out to one of my other gardens and I put some in a container for my container garden and then I gave the main plant a new spot where it had a little bit more sunshine it was kind of suffering uh, in the spot where it was um, this was one of the plants that I moved out and these are some of the best if you have an oregano plant that has a wonderful flavor just do whatever you can to keep that plant growing. <laughs> Divide it, keep it pruned, and you will love having it around. Now this is where I grew it in a container, and you can see how root bound it is. Um, this was probably at least a year overdue from being divided. You really need to keep your plants divided about every year or two when you have them growing in a container. Or they'll just get too root bound and you'll notice there won't be much growth at all. Um, so I took my half and I put it in another garden. And I also put some thyme and mint out here. This is a little spot. And then just about three months later, after this temperature started to warm up I had a beautiful little patch of thyme and oregano and mint so you will probably run out of space and this also makes a great opportunity to deliver some new plants to your friends and family and neighbors so always keep them in mind because it grows so easy they will love having a little um, plant of oregano around I've given out so many over the years and so now we'll just want to harvest it you want to harvest oregano for best flavor when it has that new growth you'll notice that the stems will be green or they might even have a red tinge to them um, and the leaves will be a bright brilliant green now later in the summer you'll notice that the oregano may have some dull colored leaves and the stems get very woody um, you can also you know of course dry the flowers they have flavor a lot of flavor too so uh, but a lot of your oils are going to be in those leaves before it flowers so this is how my oregano will look when I'm trimming it down so that I can dry it which brings us to our next section here and we'll take it into the kitchen and I'll show you how we can dry it now when I first started growing oregano I would just hang it up and dry it so I just divided up my oreganos and made sure I had the smaller ones together and you want to keep the bunches kind of small so that they will have um, room to dry and use jute string or rubber bands because if you use something real slick like a nylon string as those um, stems dry they will fall out okay so just use like a jute string which kind of will hold them well or rubber bands so I like to use a little coat hanger and then I'll put these in my pantry where it is dark and it's cool and I can turn that light off and they will dry in about three to four weeks you'll know they're done when they're crunchy so just fill them make sure they're nice and dry but nowadays I like to use a dehydrator I use this for so many different things I bring it out probably two to three times during the growing season and I love to use this for herbs now here I had a lot of oregano to dry so I stripped them off of the stems now this was a nine tray dehydrator and it handled this big project with no problem at all so if you've given some thought to purchasing a dehydrator, there are some reasons why I have really enjoyed using it. I dry not only herbs, but I dry a lot of peppers to make pepper powder. And it is less expensive when you have a dehydrator versus an oven, especially for drying 
peppers. Now you couldn't dry herbs in an oven because it would burn them up. Um, it doesn't heat up my kitchen like an oven would and it includes a lot of trays. Some of these have five and some of them have nine trays. It heats just really nice and evenly and I love that it has this very low setting on there that I can use for herbs and also for living foods like yogurt. So once I have all of my trays filled up I'll set it on the herb setting, which is its lowest setting. I like to dry them for about 10 to 12 hours, and then I'll just check on them. And if it's been raining a lot, and there's a lot of humidity in the air, they might not be done, and I'll just set it for a little while longer. Um, however, these were perfect, and of course you always want to remove those woody stems when you're drying or using your oregano. So just always pull and strip those leaves off. That's what we want to use. And so I'll just strip those right out into my little funnel here. I like to store my herbs in mason jars. And so I had one full complete mason jar here. I just packed it down as best I could. And when I'm ready to use it, I'll just take them in a little bag here, scrunch them up until it turns into a nice fine powder. And then I'll transfer them to my spice jar. Um, sometimes I don't do this and I just pour them right out of my mason jar into my hand and then I'll rub them together right into whatever dish it is I'm making. And it is so delicious. This has some of the best flavor and you also know where it came from. Now if I end up with about two mason jars, obviously I'm not going to be using the other one right away. So I like to use my food saver and I'll just suck the oxygen right out of that jar to make sure that it is sealed up nice and tight because you know your enemy whenever you are storing food is oxygen, light, or heat. So we want to put this in a cool place away from light and I've taken care of the oxygen. Of course oregano is good in so many different things, a lot of Mediterranean dishes. I love it in my lasagna. I like it in just a really nice big pot of vegetable soup. Everything fresh from the garden. You cannot beat that in the middle of the summer even. Vegetable soup from the garden is like the best. And then of course meatloaf for the family. A lot of oregano in there. Adds a lot of really good flavor. And then I love to side that with some fresh peas from the garden too. And of course pasta sauce. Something we all love. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please let me know by giving me a big thumbs up. And thank you all so much for watching. Y'all have a beautiful day.